Alright. Dude, it's hot. <sighs> so I got this thing apart. And... Alright, let me first off start off by saying... <clears throat> this differential has... These, these holes in it. And... These flanges go on. <clears throat> And them holes line up, and there's a little, like a split pin, like a, they open up, and you gotta drive them in, drive them out. And they got little, you just beat them in and out. But a lot of people, they'll just take their pin punch. One second, one second, one second. They'll just take their pin punch and just beat the crap. Dude, they'll just be beaten. Beating, beating. And this bearing is what you're putting all that load on. You're hitting the side of that bearing against itself. And, dude, you can't do that. You cannot go beat on no shaft, any shaft, with a bearing on it because I think it's called Brunel. Like, you fracture just tiny tiny bits and you don't want that on your differential on your main bearing your transmission and also also on where's this thing at on this gear selector shaft there is a pin in there and it goes through this little uh, CV joint I guess you call it and right there and I see people beating on them things. Sorry, this camera's all shaky. I see people beating on them things when they're sticking out. Because they stick out of here, and if you beat on that, there's little roller, like, caged ball bearings in there. You probably can't see them. Okay, from here. But inside there, there's little, it's like a caged roller bearing might be able to see them and that cage roller bearing rolls on here and if you hit on them on that shaft to get the split pin out to take your transmission out dude you're beating on them ball individual balls and don't do that don't you have to when I took these out I put a piece of wood on the other side of this so when I hit it, the load transferred down to that piece of wood. And also, on that time lapse video right before this, I got a C clamp and pretty much and a bolt and pushed out the pin with the C clamp and it just it pressed it out. And there was no load transmitted to these two caged roller bearings. Them like sleeved it's to allow you to select what gear you're in, the selector shaft. Okay. So once you are able to trust yourself with pre either pressing or hitting when something's backed up, it has to be backed up against something because then bearings cannot handle that. Once you hit them out, press them out, you can take off, let's see, all the stuff off your front of your transmission and I took all the bolts out of the case. You have to take out this. There's two bolts here, and also a bolt there, a bolt there, and that holds the cases together. So you gotta take them bolts out to take that apart. And um, I was having a problem getting these apart. So instead of beating on, so I kinda was tapping with wood, and then I got a, piece of aluminum um, with like a hammer so the steel wasn't mushing the aluminum over um, that wasn't working I would not do that again because it doesn't work there are like tensioners that press these cups in this is a threaded piece that star that is a nut and that's threaded and this 
this uh, bearing race is just fits in that bore and it can slide up and down. Well, that's how you set your tension between your ring and pinion, right here. Because you can adjust where the location of this is. Anyway, if you tighten this nut, it presses on here. And I just, I started tight, I started tightening that, the nut, and it literally, dude, this thing popped right apart. You have to use like a mechanical, like leverage. And I was able to access that by tightening that nut because it pulls the cases apart. And you tighten them and you hear it kind of pop apart because they're aligned on these dowels. Super uses dowels. There's one here, there's one there, it's an alignment dowel. And there's also one for the front piece, one there, there's one there. Also, to, get, to go even farther, they use dowels right here on the transmission. Here on the transmission. Go over here to the engine, I'll show you. There's one. And there's one. And if you do not have the transmission coming off of the engine straight, it has to be aligned. Because you can take one side out, this side will come out no problem. But if this side is out, and them two the engine and trans aren't parallel with each other and coming out evenly, it'll bind on this one. And you will never be able to get that off because the one is all bound up, the other one's free, and it's all at an angle and it doesn't work like that. You have to put it back, you have to reassemble to get them out. You know what I'm saying. Okay, so uh, this guy. I'm almost positive it's in there backwards. And I feel like an idiot, but you know what? It's in there backwards. There are little like splines, like a barber pole. It's got the little swirlies on it. Well, they're only like, they only cover maybe 10 degrees and there's like 50 of them. And depending on which way you put that seal in, the shaft will spin and then little lines will push the oil back into the transmission. Well, mine was in there backwards. So it was pulling the oil, it was pumping the oil out of the transmission. And luckily it didn't get onto my clutch disc and my uh, pressure plate's fine. Everything's all oily. Dude, it's like bad. And it was leaking, it was leaking everywhere. And it was also leaking out of this. Because this ring gear shoots directly up that. And that is the dipstick on the stock Subaru on the WRX. Well, this is all fine and dandy, but when you go switch the stuff around, it's coming right out of the dipstick hole. I just looked on Subaru Gear's website and they updated their page at least from what I can tell I didn't see it when I assembled this transmission and this transmission is a TY754 and they say on the TY752 you can't run this because it shoots out of that hole well TY754 is leaking all over the place put put this vent in there don't because I put this together I was like oh no I'll be fine you know it's TY754 they said some of them are okay it's not okay you need this vent because it will be leaking everywhere. It'll. I came up with this contraption to where well, you can see that, and I have this little barb on here coming from the dipstick location, and I kept thinking of a way because I didn't want to tear this thing apart. So I came up. Hold on, let me lay down here. Ah. Came up with this contraption. It goes on this tube swirls up, goes into that fuel filter, and then comes out the top. 
So my idea was if I had like a reservoir above that dipstick, it would shoot up the dipstick and I calculated I can only drive like five hours at a time before I run out of gas and I have to stop. So that fuel filter would catch all of the excess that would shoot up there. Well, I guess it was too much for it because it was still leaking out of that. And I figured after like four or five hours, me getting gas, I would stop, I would go to the gas station and it would drain back down because it'd be thin because it'd be warm. Well, it's not the case. It was leaking right out of that. So now I can officially cap this off. I looked on the website because I was getting confused on where they said to put it. Ugh, I'm nasty. And right here, you can see, maybe, that that is in that little web right there. <clears throat> no oil is being slung anywhere. Well, it's, it's deep. It's that deep. Probably two centimeters, maybe like, uh, maybe like five eighths. And you can put that vent on this side, like right there. And there's no oil being slung because that's behind the bearing. And also, my hands are nasty. This plate. Rests right here, which is gonna cover let's see that goes like this. That is gonna cover that up. And no oil would be able to get to it. And it can still breathe. And I found this little guy. It's all stainless steel. Found it on McMaster car. It was like six bucks. And that is gonna live right in there. You can't see anything. But I'm gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna tap it out. This is an eighth MPT, I think which I don't like because it's not metric, but they don't have any metric like anything. And as far as a vent, that's all stainless. So I just figured I'd go with it. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything, it's, it's gonna work. 